Dr. Kalyan Chakravarti is a consultant endocrinologist trained in UK. He's closely associated with uh, Idea Clinics. His research interests are growth, PCOS, type 1 diabetes, pituitary and thyroid. He's got, he's got special interest in advanced diabetic uh, treatments of continuous glucose monitoring and insulin pumps. It's Kalyan Chakravarti. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I'm going to be talking today about uh, <clears throat> discrepant th thyroid function tests and some challenging cases. So, uh, case one, we'll see a 36-year-old lady who was referred with an endocrine, uh, to an endocrine OPD with a diagnosis of thyroiditis. She had high free T3 level, uh, a normal TSH, and a uh, high, or uh, you can say a highish uh, T3 T4 as well. Or you can say normal T4, but just a high free T3 and normal TSH with mild thyrotoxic symptoms. Now, you would expect that if their patient is thyrotoxic, the TSH should be suppressed. But this patient has inappropriately normal TSH in the context of high T3 and clinical thyrotoxicosis. So a thyroid scintigraphy showed that there is reduced uptake in the right lobe with detectable nodules and there was attributed to some silent thyroiditis. No further investigations were done for one year and she had persistent high free T3 levels. And a year later, uh, a TRH test was done and a T3 suppression was performed. These are dynamic tests to confirm whether there is a problem is, uh, with the pituitary gland, not with the thyroid. Uh, and the results were, results were consistent with the TSH OMA, which is actually a TSH secreting tumor, which we see very, very rare. The only reason we highlighted this case is if you see a normal TSH in the context of a, uh, a, a, a clinically thyrotoxic patient, it just means that the TSH is uh, the culprit, the pituitary uh, <coughs> is not suppressing to how it should and you should always sub su uh, suspect a TSH OMA. And we did an MRI and they, they found to be a 3 millimeter uh, pituitary lesion. So these TSH OMAs, they are not really very massive, they need not be massive and even a small a, a minor lesion can also produce a uh, clinically thyrotoxic patient. <clears throat> so the diagnosis was TSH OMA. It's a very rare condition, approximately 1 in million. Um, there are uh, it's around 2% of the, all the pituitary tumor. Pituitary tumors itself is very rare and of all the pituitary tumors, it's only 2%. And uh, most of them are macroadenomas, some are microadenomas. Um, they sometimes secrete co-secrete uh, co prolactin along with TSH. The clinical presentation, should they should all, uh, if, it, if there's a TSH OMA, it just means that it, it, uh, the patient is clinically thyrotoxic. So they may have a goiter because there's a constant TSH stimulation and the goiter may be present which may mislead you to thinking that it might be a Graves but it's actually the TSH stimulation which is doing it. Obviously you will do all other hormone investigations uh, like uh, growth hormone, prolactin and everything to make sure that the pituitary is actually okay, it is just the TSH which is, which is the abnormality and you will also do a visual field uh, examination and uh, visual field checks to see if there is any uh, mass effect of the pituitary adenoma. And uh, fertility issues can be there with this TSH OMA. Uh, the treatment is obviously the first treatment will be surgery, but you have to di the diagnosis is the main bit. The the uh, ge getting the clinical diagnosis may may be difficult. Once we find it, it it's possible that we may just uh, 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 image it and then uh, uh, the patient might be treated with surgery. The only other differential diagnosis is a resistance to thyroid hormone, which I will discuss in the next slide. In the case two, this is a 29-year-old woman who has was already <coughs> confirmed to have TSH OMA, which was clinical diagnosis of TSH OMA. Uh, again, the same thing, inappropriate suppression of TSH uh, with a clinically thyrotoxic patient. So normal TSH and high T3, T4. She was started on methimazole treatment, but after discontinuation uh, uh, and after discontinuation th the, uh, of the patient from uh, methimazole, she underwent an MRI scan. And there was some, some suspicion of pituitary lesion compari uh, compatible with microadenoma. Now, we always have to take these lesions into uh, with a pinch of salt because if you, are, if, you, if you send a patient to an MRI of the pituitary to a radiologist saying query microadenoma, there will inevitably be some form of microadenoma, 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter. So, all microadenomas may not be functional and we have to therefore then do these uh, tests which differentiate between these two lesions which is the uh, TSH OMA and the resistance to thyroid hormone. So this patient although uh, uh, the TSH levels rose normally after TRH stimulation, the patient underwent transphenidyl surgery. So the, they diagnosed as TSH OMA 
they confirmed it. They, he underwent uh, transplantal surgery, but histological uh, confirmation did not reveal any adenoma, and the patient continued to develop, continued to have inappropriate secretion of his TSH, and uh, still continued to have hyperthyroid symptoms. So this uh, patient has actually a mutation. He has a, a, a mutation which caused the <coughs> resistant to thyroid hormone. So clinically very similar to uh, TSHOMA. Uh, it is also again very very rare. I have yet to see a case in India yet and it is actually a dot autosomal dominant fashion. The remainder 20% are to be a, a de novo mutation and it is generally because of the end organs uh, receptor just like you have <coughs> other receptor mutations, this also has a specific receptor uh, mutation to the uh, thyroid hormone receptor and therefore continuously there is, there is it may be a, a selective uh, a resistance to the pituitary gland itself or there may be a generalized uh, thyroid hormone resistance. Um, it leads to a variety of clinical manifestations that generally the, if the pituitary is predominantly resistance but the per peripheral tissues are not the patient may present with clinical features of thyrotoxicosis, but if it's a generalized uh, uh, resistance or to the thyroid hormone, the patient can actually have a hypothyroid feature because your thyroid hormone is there, but the tissues are not taking it up. But if it's a specifically a pituitary related thyroid resistance, your T3 is not feed, uh, feeding back to the pituitary and the pituitary continues to uh, secrete more amount of TSH, therefore causing a thyrotoxic feature which happened in that earlier patient. <clears throat> and uh, 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 there are many patients with the, uh, uh, this thyroid hormone may be relatively asymptomatic also only with mild symptoms just like you have familial hypercalcemic hypercalcuria where you have a calcium sensing receptor mutation the patient just goes unchecked uh, or you have uh, uh, the MODI, the monogenic diabetes uh, where you have gluco uh, glucokinase mutations the, so these are all very mild mutations which may remain unchecked Generally, treatment is not required because uh, if the patient is very mildly thyrotoxic or hypothyroid, you don't require anything. If there is mild thyrotoxicosis, you can just put them on beta blocker. Other than that, you cannot do anything much because it's a receptor level mutation. Now, this is more important, how to differentiate between the TSHOMA and the RTH. There is a lot of overlap. You can have a clinically thyrotoxic picture with uh, resistance to thyroid hormone if it is a selective uh, pituitary resistance, which may uh, overlap with a TSHOMA <coughs> and the TSH level is actually normal in both levels so you cannot um, uh, depend on this uh, TSH levels so the best diagnosis will be alpha G, uh, alpha subunit of the TSH uh, 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 the TSH. So the alpha subunit is much more higher. If you take a ratio of alpha subunit to TSH, the alpha subunit will be higher in uh, production, which is, is this diagnostic of a TSH tumor. This is generally one of the most classical or most uh, 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 typical pre presentation of a TSH tumor where you have a high alpha subunit production, which confirms that this is a TSH tumor. Almost 70% of patients with TSH tumor have a high alpha subunit. There are other tests to differentiate between uh, a TSHOMA and uh, uh, resistant to thyroid hormone. It can be a, a TRH stimulation, it can be a, a T3 suppression, uh, but we will not go into all those specialized uh, tests now. The other thing to do is to do an octreotide suppression test where you have a, uh, if you any, any tumor which actually suppress with an octreotide, any neuroendocrine tumor will suppress with an octreotide. But if you have a resistant to thyroid hormone, there is no change with the TSH. So um, uh, I'll skip this case. The main thing to take from this case is that uh, there is a biotin assay interference. We just wanted to highlight the, the importance of assay interference. We do see a lot of patients who have slightly high TSH, slightly low TSH, continue to monitor antibodies are negative it doesn't go anywhere but just as remains like a slight high tc uh, high tsh it's possible that these patients have some antibodies in their system which can which are causing heterophil antibodies to tsh which cause a slightly high level of tsh to be uh, detected in their system and just keep an eye out for these patients don't treat them so not all subclinical hypothyroidism actually require to you to be treated if the tsh is stable not improve, not increasing and antibodies are negative, we can actually wait and watch. <clears throat>
the uh, the assays interfere can arise of uh, because of uh, different uh, antibodies it may be because to the tsh it may be to the total t4 and total t3 and uh, uh, many many different uh, uh, samples may also give you the same result this is the same thing again you see a lot of uh, antibodies uh, which interfere with your tfts and uh, biotin specifically biotin therapy can give you uh, some uh, disturbance with your thyroid function tests. So I just wanted to uh, uh, highlight about a few different scenarios on how to, how to, how to differentiate these, this is for non-endocrinologists in the audience, if you, how to differentiate the, uh, the pathology based on the TSH or based on the T4 or based on the T3. If you have a normal TSH and if the patient is euthyroid or hyperthyroid, of course, if the the TSH is normal, T4 and T3 are normal, the patient is euthyroid. But if the TSH is normal and the free T4 and free T3 is high, it can be either resistance to thyroid hormone or it can be either a, a, a TSH OMA as well. But if the patient has hypothyroidism uh, with a normal TSH, then it may be central hypothyroidism uh, because of a, a MCT8 deficiency or any other uh, uh, gen genetic deficiencies ex uh, uh, that exist in children or they may have central hypothyroidism because of uh, other possibilities. So if the TSH is normal and other T4, uh, T3 T T T are high, the suspicion is TSH OMA and RTH. If it is low, you may have central hypothyroidism um, because of whatever reasons. Now, if you have a low TSH, the diagnosis varies. If you have a low TSH with a high T4 and T3, obviously you have grave disease. If you have a low TSH with... Uh, um, with high and so the first three conditions are all a variant of the same thing. Graves disease is an adult's neonatal thyrotoxicosis is because of uh, other reasons. Hashitoxicosis is where you have Hashimoto's thyroidism, uh, hypoth Hashimoto's disease, uh, causing a uh, 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 causing a, uh, a switching antibodies which actually uh, give you stimulation of the thyroid at one point and suppression on the other hand. So you may encounter these patients in practice where you have hypothyroidism and suddenly they go into hyperthyroidism for no reason. That's because of the switching antibodies. And again, you have a clinical uh, diagnosis very similar to Graves, but it is just that they came from hypo to hyperthyroidism. In sick thyroid syndrome, you have a, a low TSH and the free T3, free T4 will also be normal or low. It is just because of a body's normal response to shut down your thyroid axis when the patient is very sick. Obviously, in central hypothyroidism, you have low TSH and low T4 and low T3. Yeah, so basically we just wanted to uh, highlight about different uh, uh, areas where you have discrepant uh, uh, thyroid function tests, not just a clinical Graves or a clinical hypothyroid. You have to take into picture what is the clinic first, see what the patient is, is it clinically hypothyroid or hyperthyroid and then with that, that fits with your biochemical picture. If it doesn't, then you either refer to a specialist endocrinologist or if the patient is stable, and the thyroid functions are very marginally elevated or suppressed with either the T4, T3. Ignore it. Just wait for the wait for the patient to come back. If it worsens, then you can always uh, recheck again. Antibodies will give you a clear indication. So always check with TPO antibodies, antithyroglobulin antibodies, TSH receptor antibodies. These these three will actually tell you whether there is any autoimmune disease or not. If not, you can actually wait and don't do anything about it. Total T4 and total T3 are generally not. Uh, 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 not clinically viable tests, only free T3, free T4 count as a, a good test because those are the actual uh, clinically relevant or clinically and biochemically it, uh, it makes sense. But total T4 is not a re relevant test, it goes up in pregnancy, it goes up with a lot of other conditions, it goes down if you are nutritionally uh, imbalanced. So no need to check to total T3, total T3, T4 or if they are high no need to worry about it. If the free T3, free T4 is high, then yes, then uh, we have to take it into account. In pregnancy, total T4, total T3, high total T4, T3 is very normal with a slightly low free T4 and free T, uh, free T3. So please take that into account. Always take that uh, clinical picture and uh, correlate with the biochemical findings. With that, I conclude.